Yeah, I know we're recording. Yeah, I know, I know. I there know, we I go. Know. I got it. Hmm. Does Andrew have a last name, or does he just go by Yellow? Fruit? Andrew Kinnear. <laughs> Andrew Everything, everywhere I saw it, I was looking for yellow fruit. Andrew Yellow Fruit. <laughs> Andrew Yellow Fruit. I don't have a last hey. name. No. I, I was no. spying, I, it's it's legally changed it's my yellow name. Yellow fruit. It's yellow fruit. <laughs> Andrew Yellow Fruit. <laughs> Andrew Yellow Fruit. Uh, that's hilarious. It's, it's How's it nice going, guys? You, Andrew. Hey, man. Yeah, How are good. You? Nice to meet you too. Yeah, you as well. What's Excellent. going on? Yeah. yeah. Just chilling in my basement. How about you guys? Oh, pretty much the same. my office upstairs yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i'm Amongst same deal shit same but, deal. You know, yeah it's all good yeah Excellent. it's uh it's nice to meet you it's nice to meet you too yeah yeah we um yeah. it's kind of funny we we uh we've been doing this four years but i think i think most of our guests either are friends of friends or someone that we have met in our tenured journey in retail of some sort and um, mm -hmm. you're you're cool. one of the rare ones. Like I I think I I saw you on LinkedIn. I I saw some of the cool stuff you're doing and and reached out. And Great. I, it took us a little bit of time to get, but I think that was mostly me, just not getting. <laughs> wow, I, um, I didn't even know you. We didn't. I didn't know you didn't. Well, I know. I knew. I knew. I didn't know Andrew Yellowfruit. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know you two didn't. No, know no. I, I I didn't. I I saw I saw some of because Andrew oh, Andrew posts yeah. uh, a chunk of stuff on on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um and i i don't remember why but i i think it was a little while ago and he and i started talking and then and then uh oh. like i was in i was out and then i finally came back and realized like damn i i asked andrew to be on and then i didn't send him any dates or anything like <laughs> poor guy is probably like <laughs> a bit of a loser oh, man, man. Like, I was <laughs> i was <laughs> losing sleep over it so i was <laughs> I was just thinking, when am I going to do this podcast? Exactly. Oh, thinking, damn it. Like, I said yes. When am I coming on? It dangled that fruit in front of him. And that poor guy's thinking, like, what the hell did I do? Did I say something wrong? I see, I'm usually oh, so, we're, we can tell we're very well prepared. So I didn't even know. I thought you guys knew each other. I, or maybe yeah, Philip no. probably told me I wasn't listening no. or something. Yeah. Like, some some I tell all sorts like of things. Twitter, never you know, yeah. some people are on Snapchat. I'm more yeah. of a LinkedIn kind I like of LinkedIn yeah. too. That's that's we're, we're LinkedIn, LinkedIn guys for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I like yeah, yeah, I like yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah. I'm not a big Twitter's a little noisy for me. It's too much shit Same. going on. Snapchat, I, I don't I don't understand that anyway. TikTok, me I don't either. know what the hell to do with it. Snap, I'm getting. Instagram, are, I used to like, so but this now conference it's like life is on Snap. Uh no, not Snap. We're on TikTok. No, TikTok. I don't know what the hell we're doing on TikTok. Who goes to TikTok Buddy, at our age? Do you Nobody. know? So I fi I figured out a handful of things now. So every time I pose, mm. it it's got to be live and authentic on 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 TikTok as well. I'll tell you. So if I post here in the office, no matter how excited I look, I get no views. Nobody cares. But if I do from the car, I get an average of twelve hundred views. Seriously. Uh, yeah, Who's yeah, looking? yeah. So, so I posted yesterday because we had an. Yeah, episode. It's not me and Andrew. I tell you that um, much. We don't. I don't, I don't have TikTok. So. so, so our episodes come out every Monday night. So every hmm. Tuesday we do socials, and so I posted uh, Tuesday afternoon. Um, so by last night we were at nine hundred and eighty-one views. Um, what? On TikTok, what, the, what, so. what do we have to do with TikTok? Listen. They like I'm just me. asking. All right. They oh, like maybe, oh so it's you is what we're all oh, in, no. okay, okay, in okay, my okay. mind. You're helping their business, right? Because it's it's organic right up until yeah. it's not, and then you have to pay to get yeah. impressions. Yeah. You know, we I think we saw that with with uh, what everything like we saw with oh. Facebook, oh, saw it with Instagram. Jeez. What are you talking everybody, about? Everybody, <laughs> everybody wants it. Yeah, everybody yeah, wants yeah, blood yeah. out of you, right? Yeah. 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 But anyway, it's interesting. Anyway. It's uh it's kind of fun. So we'll see where it goes, you know? Cool. Cool. Um, so, so we've got, we've got Andrew Kinnear on today, co-founder of Yellow Fruit. Andrew um, Yellow Fruit. Or otherwise known as Andrew Yellow Fruit. The Yellow Fruit. Um, we, we'd love, so we, we don't actually know you at all. So we, we'd love to hear a little yeah, bit about you. Sure. Um, sure. The, the, we're, we're, we're largely unprepared, largely unscripted. Um, but uh, Me too. I guess the way we kind of do this is... Three of us will get along. Yeah, we, we'd love to hear about you and then and then sure. how you got to where you are now and then and then tell us about Yellow Fruit and the whole bit. Yeah, sure. Um, geez, where do I start? Uh, <laughs> where do you like, want? man? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I'm, 
I'm like a born and raised Ontarian. Um, okay. You know, I okay. grew up uh, mostly around the Collingwood, Ontario kind of neighborhood up there and then okay. went to Guelph to university. And, um, you know, I, I did a few things in university. I sort of started in computers and ended up more in like marketing and then economics. And um, I actually met my wife at university, well, at a bar uh, that we both worked at during university, but not actually in university. Um, she, she and I uh, weren't in any of the same classes or anything like that, uh, but she's my co-founder. That's why I bring her up so early. Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, so, so Claire and I met way back then and then, you know, didn't talk to each other for like, I don't know, 10 years or something. And then reconnected when we both lived in Toronto. Um, and then, um, you know, the, the personal life part of the story, like, you know, got married, had kids, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the professional part of it was, um, you know, kind of interesting. So we were, uh, we were living together. Um, we have these two kids. Uh, she doesn't eat dairy. And, um, you know, we started kind of on this product development journey. And that's how Yellow Fruit came to be. But I'll tell you more about me first. So mm -hmm. in that span of time, uh, when I was kind of, you know, having real jobs and things like that, I, I worked for a number of different companies, um, mostly in a marketing or sales kind of uh, capacity. I worked for a display company selling big, you know, wooden boxes that hold mm -hmm. paint chips, you know, very exciting stuff. Um, but I learned, you know, the, the business of, um, yeah. you know, display marketing, retail, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I eventually got more into technology. So things like loyalty programs and points programs and that kind of stuff. Cool. Um, and, and developed some expertise there um, and was really hot on social media marketing very early on. So it's funny we joked about, about Twitter. Um, I put a couple of big Canadian brands on Twitter. Um, and, and that was sort of my, that was my entrance into so, sort of some modern marketing yeah. with some big brands. I worked for yeah. Air Miles. I worked for Sobeys, uh, a couple of agencies here and there. So okay. I was, I was kind of always doing, um, marketing and technology together. Um, I worked for a bank doing, you know, digital marketing. And then I, I ended up, um, spending a few years at OLG. Okay. Uh, in the in the lottery business unit specifically, and uh, I was there for for a while and and kind of had a um, I would say that was like that shaped uh, a lot of my marketing experience. I got to lead a it was I was very lucky. I got to lead a team um, that was doing everything from uh, what you see in at retail, what you see in stores. So OLG operates mm -hmm. ten thousand points of sale. Uh, in on just in Ontario. Um, so everything from like the posters on the big blue plastic thing yeah. to what shows up on that video screen attached to the terminal. Um, that okay. was all my team. And then also wow. uh, the non-paid marketing stuff like, um, you know, social media, mobile app development, website, uh, email, CRM, all that kind of stuff. So, so this was a very cool job. Um, wow. You know, with all these wow, kind of different cool. responsibilities, it was very cool. Um, How I learned a lot. What was then. your team? I was about 15 people. Uh, so a couple of the, the yeah. folks reporting to me had their own team. So like, a, a, yeah. you know, the retail side of things, there were yeah. a few people um, that rolled up to that group. Um, and then I had to kind of create a few roles too, because this was, this is a few years back. And you know, OLG wasn't doing anything with social media when it came to the lottery. So I had to kind of make a business case for a person. And then we hired this great person uh, right out of like Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment. She, she knew what she was doing. And she yeah. kind of brought us into the modern world of social media marketing. And then the same thing for mobile apps. Um, you know, we, we were kind of in the stone age uh, a little bit when it came to uh, mobile. You know, we were barely making mobile optimized websites. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of making this business case for things like ticket checkers, you know, and just really basic stuff that you would expect a lottery would have, you know, I, I bought a ticket, let me pick up my phone and scan it to find out if I'm a winner, like really basic stuff. Um, and that was like two years in the making, you know, I had to make a business case to get a person, 
make a business case to get a budget, give the budget to the person, have the person find an agency, the agency, you know, review takes six months. Like it was, it was so, uh, such an arduous process, but then eventually it all, you know, it all works out yeah. and we do awesome stuff. Yeah. So that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, and after all, so there was some changes there. And then after OLG, I ended up doing a lot of what I liked, but for my own kind of consulting business. So I had some clients, um, the projects were obviously a lot smaller, um, cause I didn't have like a team of 15 right. to do stuff. It was more just me, uh, <laughs> yeah. me, and, consulting, me and me yeah. doing and all me. the work, you know? Yeah. 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 We're familiar with this. Forget that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the consulting, the consulting also helped, um, with things like, you know, selling myself, because, you know, any consultant will tell you, you spend most of your time getting your next client, right? So um, that was a lot of fun. I, I worked with some some really fun brands and, and really tapped the network of the people who had supported me through my career. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I ended up working for a, a great guy that I've known for years who was at HBC and doing some work for them uh, in payments and, um, you know, really cool stuff, payments and loyalty. Um, worked for a big uh, food service company. So like just really random stuff, but it was mm -hmm. all kind of people who knew me or knew somebody who knew me and right. it was all referrals. They, I don't know how any consultants get like cold business, like just out of the blue. You, you, if you don't have a network, I don't see yeah. how you I don't do see how you do it either. I mean, all my stuff is like yours and probably Phil has come from somebody. Some, yeah. I, I've never, I've never knocked on a door without knowing I Who's have. gonna answer the door? I have. I, I have. I, I've I've had a, a little work. bit of it. I mean, you like really? you put up web pages and like if you do. I mean, nowadays, like I think people check you out before they get to you, though, don't you? Yeah, think? yeah, but but like like I do. I used I do a lot of commenting on things like Retail Wire, so people you know like retailers read that stuff and brands do too, and yeah. then eventually you get. But it is rare, though, right? Like, I think they're and, rare. Yeah, yeah. They're rare too. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. So I think I think that's probably why consultants will do things like write an article for a for yeah. a trade pub or yeah. or do a speaking yeah. event. I've gotten a couple yeah. of things out of speaking events. Yeah, where people yeah. like didn't know me but then saw me speak yeah. and they're yeah. like, oh, we we like kind of his. Dude, approach. you're kind of smart. Yeah. Come come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is always great for the ego. Yep. Right? We heard yep. you speak, oh. and now we yeah, want you. Oh, of course, yeah, <laughs> why wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah. I've heard you yeah. speak too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. I did. Um, yeah. So I've done a lot of things, mostly marketing. And so so then we end up, you know, back into this yellow yeah. fruit world where um, Claire and I basically said we could take this product and we could turn it into a company, turn it into a business. Um, but we we're on our own. Right. It's like we don't have VCs giving us millions of dollars. Um, we bootstrapped the whole thing and we just said like, we got to learn everything from manufacturing yeah. to like the science of product development to, you know, go back to basics on marketing and sales. Like we had to kind of figure it all out. Yeah. So, so do you, do you want to, sorry, Kenny, do you, do you no, want no, to tell us about like what, cause I, like we brought you on and, and yellow fruit, but I don't think, I, I think I know what yellow fruit is, but do you want to just kind of For cover sure. what it is and. <laughs> Well, sure. I'm, I'm with yeah, Phil I because you. I yeah. did. Well, it's funny because I never researched. So I tell, I asked Phil tonight. I said, like, "Who is this guy?" Right? He sends me this yellow fruit. So it took me a while to find yellow fruit because I was with a W. Nothing comes up, yes. except, except yellow fruit. And I looked, and I so I've been listening to you talk. I'm thinking, okay, but this is this is a refrigerated, frozen product, CPG product, and I'm waiting yes. for something in this lineage of your workflow that's dealt with CPG, and I'm thinking. I'm, yeah. I'm waiting. Sobeys in his background. I, I know, but that's I, I heard that. I was, I was, I was Yeah, I heard yeah, it too, Sobeys. but it was like he breezed over it. We hit lottery, <laughs> and, we're doing, yeah. and I think, okay, I'm still, and I for, haven't heard for But the for OLG Sobeys, terminals are not far away from the from the um, ice cream. Sure. Yeah, it's, you know, bunkers technology. right at the front of the counter. Almost and same, then, same, Phil. You know, Almost so same, same. A freezer, same, you know? a freezer and, a, and a terminal. An LCD screen, a lottery, you know. Yeah. I mean, we we used to we used to think of lottery products as basically a, a packaged good right especially things that that had a physicality like an instant ticket like a scratch yeah, ticket. i guess to some yeah. degree i mean yeah. it was it was there were a lot product, of but... um you know comparables but definitely it wasn't like a frozen i wasn't dealing with uh, yeah. buyers at all there was a supply chain it's a whole that. different yeah. world yeah i mean totally. you're 
That's why I was waiting. I thought, okay, he's going to come to it. It's coming. Yeah. Oh, no, not coming. No, we had to learn it from scratch. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, even at Sobeys, like I knew a few people at Sobeys, but I was, you know, helping their executives understand why they needed to be on Facebook. I wasn't talking about food or selling <laughs> groceries, right? It was nothing preserving nothing the cold related chain, to you know, but what was cool yeah. is my, my office was right across the hall from the guy who launched like all the products for compliments and sensations at Sobeys. Okay. Okay. And so this, this guy was like a chemist. His name is John Hale, very talented chemist a product developer. Um, he had worked for Tesco and and came to Canada right. and, and did a bunch of product development for Sobeys. And then is he's an independent now. Um, but he was a guy that I met when I was at Sobeys. So like 10 years later, I ring up John Hale. Hey, remember me? We had uh, offices next to each other. I want to launch an ice cream made yeah. of bananas. Uh, can you help me figure it out? And he said, well, in fact, I'm a product developer for hire. So we hit it off and started uh, working on products. That's so amazing. It's it was pretty cool. That is so amazing. tell us how you got yeah. to a, a, sure. a, a, the banana thing. Like sure. That. So yeah. So let me, okay. So let me tell you the, the, the audience, the listeners, what yellow fruit actually is. So yellow fruit is a non-dairy frozen banana dessert. So it's like ice cream, but made from banana puree instead of cream or milk. Um, okay. It's an organic product. It's made in a peanut free facility and it's certified vegan. So this is fruit, but it's made from all the same kind of structural ingredients as ice cream. So it's got fat, it's got sugar, it's got protein, but only in the sense that like real ice cream has those things, right? You need that to make good ice cream, even right. if it's plant based, mm -hmm. fat, sugar, and protein. You know, there's it's science behind it. it. Yeah, yeah, it, it holds the air together. Yeah. It makes tiny yeah. ice crystal crystals. It depresses freezing points. So there's all this science that goes into making ice cream. So if you have these equivalent um, parts that are plant based, you can make a plant based ice cream that's still scoopable and tastes good and has all the things it needs. So, so that's where. So mm -hmm. back to my my comment about John. We started uh, down this product development path, coming up with a banana based product and realized pretty early, like, you know, these are the flavors that we want. We want to, you know, start off with and launch with, uh, we tried a bunch, but we landed on three really good ones. And then, you know, we really refined what was going to go into it. Like when you're starting from scratch, you could have bold ideas. Like we don't want to have sugar in it. Well, if you want to depress freezing point, you don't have sugar. You could use like sugar alcohols. You can use other things right but then your ingredient deck is going to say xylitol or something and, yeah. and that's like scary so we opted like okay let's just put actual nice organic cane sugar yeah. and anyone who doesn't like sugar fine don't eat it but i'd rather give my kids a little bit of sugar than xylitol yeah something so I can that pronounce. was like the approach to yeah. to product development and so we went through that for all the ingredients and we landed on on three products and we happened to name them after our kids too. So there's Monty's favorite strawberry, Eddie's favorite chocolate and Holly's favorite mango. And those are my three kids. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. That's so awesome. What, what's the, what's the reason for the banana? Like what's what, what's, yeah. like why didn't you pick any other fruit or another non-dairy something? Like totally. Why? I mean, I mean, I don't think we were, um, this was not a novel concept. Like there are, you go to any yard sale and you'll find a machine called a Yonanas where you like jam in a frozen banana and out comes soft serve. Never heard of it. it it's a, a Yonanas. A Yonanas. Yonanas, yeah. And then never the other thing it, is really. most parents have mushed up banana for their babies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you'd be starting with banana, like, right? Banana peas, yeah. like it's a few basic, but banana is always one of one. It's kind of sweet and Woo. Exactly. I, I, banana like we, works we've made, because it's we've got made its frozen sugar. banana ice cream here at the house, but, yeah. but we don't have the same persistence, right? Like <laughs> usually after about three weeks, you find one neglected yeah. frozen banana left in the freezer because we yes. all lost interest. So <laughs> yes. Yeah. And if, and the thing is, if you eat it right away, it tastes delicious, but if you were to just make some at home and then put it in a container in the freezer, it'll yeah, not freeze so much solid and you oh, can't yeah. eat it the next oh. day. Oh, okay. So, so we faced those kinds of like, hmm, I wonder if there's a way 
and mm. we were already loving the the banana and and the mm. flavors we were getting with like banana strawberry and banana peanut butter and banana chocolate and banana all these different banana things we ended up not doing peanut butter that was just an example but like right. we ended up landing on a um on a product line that we thought okay if you look at the natural foods freezer in Loblaws, there is oat, soy, almond, cashew, coconut like crazy. Right. You know, maybe even some <clears throat> weird like water chemical, you know, we're going to call yes. it frozen dessert. Right. But there wasn't banana. Yeah. And then and then it turns out there was a banana um, and it wasn't doing well. It's off the market now. And, and we're sort of the only banana out there right now. Uh, but it wasn't novel. There was other banana frozen dessert. So we landed on banana because we liked it. And we saw that market opportunity, like niche within a niche and thought, you know, if we can nail this, um, you know, we'll have fans who don't want coconut and are allergic to cashew and, 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 right. Right. So, so that's kind of why we, we focused and that's how banana mm-hmm. it wasn't like we set out to do something different. We just, set out and was like well we're doing this and it's working so let's keep going right i love it interesting interesting i love it it's so it's funny right because we we get a lot of folks on this program that are the opposite they they take something they love and they double down on it right and they just keep going and they go and they go and then like usually it's kenny and i going listen just because you love it like if you love it and you that's, can't make money awesome, at it. But it's a passion, mean, right? Yes. <laughs> like it's just yeah. a passion. And nothing so if you want to make passion, money at it, you gotta love it a little less and, and be a little more ruthless about what works. But yeah. yeah. So it's nice to hear that you were a bit ruthless about it, right? Is that we, we love this, we love this concoction, but we we actually gotta go out and figure out what the market actually is. That's will kind bear, of like kind of impressed right? on this one, because it's not yeah, it's not sort of and I'm, I, I do, I, I'm keeping trying, I'm trying to keep finding sort of the connections of why yeah. like the, the, you know, oh, my kids grew up on bananas, you know, we used to freeze them all the time, we used to mush them up, blah, 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 blah. and you're thinking, okay, I get the banana, right? I also get the banana, most people do like bananas, it's still, yeah. it's still it's the most popular body. fruit in the world. It's, exactly, mm-hmm. most people bench, yeah. you know, how expensive a grocer is off the bananas, it's been since the beginning of time, bananas mm-hmm. are 69 cents, 89 cents, like it's, <laughs> You just get so stupid things in retail yeah, yeah. that just hold yeah. true. But yes. and I, I, I like Phil, I'm thinking, okay, but he doesn't got the banana story built into this world. <laughs> thinking that's you, pretty freaking cool that you said, yeah, okay, here's an opportunity. Yeah. Bananas. We found a gap, right? We that's that's pretty, yeah. pretty, and, and pretty Do you cool. have do you have like allergies in that? Because you've you've chosen a very specific path too with right like um the the peanut you said free, dairy your wife thinks like that for dairy right she's laughing yeah claire her. claire's allergic to dairy which okay. started us on the okay. let's eat less ice cream yeah kind of we yeah. still want ice cream but it's not ice cream like yeah like, absolutely like who doesn't yeah. like ice cream so oh so we were still yeah. eating it uh, and we were just trying to look for other alternatives That's i have a tree nut allergy so we weren't buying okay. the like the cashew, cashew ones. No, you can't yeah. do any of those. Almonds yeah. are okay. Um, you know, peanuts fine for me. I'm not allergic to peanuts. Um, but, you know, so there were all these sort of individual things that were pointing us towards, okay, we'll go, go plant-based. It's got to right. be delicious. Let's avoid tree nuts, you know, and, and that's sort of what guided us towards mm. um, from, from uh, a product point of view. I mean, we knew from the start we weren't going to make it in our kitchen and sell it at the farmer's market. Like this was very much a, how do we scale a business right from the start? Right. Everyone, now, was that you thinking that way? Or is that when you met up with the, the, the Sobeys guy, like, was that. Or no, no, you, that you was, the wife that said, was we're not doing yeah. this. We're not doing the shit in the house. We're going. Correct. We're yeah. going, we're going. Yeah. Okay. And, and part of, part of any good product developer consultant, um, part of their job is to like help you commercialize. It's to, come up with a product that you could yeah. bring to a co-packer right. and 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 actually scale right because otherwise like they're going to help you refine your cookies that you can sell at the farmer's market like you're not going to spend money on you're not going to pay that guy to help you perfect your cookies if you're not going to scale so, you, so i'm telling always, you right now just so you know this is opposite of what most people do <laughs> most people go to the farmer's market and think geez i gotta make more cookies and they don't know how to do it so don't kid yourself that is the way it happens 
you know what i think I, awesome. I think i listened to enough episodes of oh, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, how they built this or whatever yeah. that the guy Roz, you know that podcast? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How he built it. And so you hear yeah. the guy from like Cliff Bar or something talk about how he had to, you know, do this in his basement and whatever. Most There's do, so many right? examples, right? That's and funny I, though. Well, I, I saw I, it as like, yeah. how do you not just jump right to the like if you know you're if you know you're gonna do it, do it. Why not go to scale and yeah. then your unit economics are good like yeah. pretty much right away. Yeah. Um, and we're a big fan of of unit economics. I think is well, I, which that's, it's a different that's how we drive to, our business. Yeah. Well, most people, again, that's not what they. It's typically the passion, the idea. It it, it forms into a business, and a lot of times the reason they don't work because it should never have been a business anyway. It was yeah. just a cool idea, right? Yeah. Uh, we but, we've met we've met people that that make stuff yes. and then bought the the foil equipment to place in their. <laughs> To place in their kitchen so they could you're thinking like seriously <laughs> you're going no oh, man no, yeah, no, no, no 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 the, the whole no need. point if you're going foil yeah no no, need. no what are we doing here <laughs> like <laughs> and nobody explains to you the complexity of the refrigeration frozen aisles and how well, hard it or interesting it is with those buyers i mean buyers are we've both been buyers for retail chains yeah but we know what we're like on any given sunday yeah refrigerated and the frozen guys that's a whole different league of interest oh they're a whole level I, of cranky like they're I, a whole think, different level of cranky i don't think anyone yeah. ever said to me oh you shouldn't do frozen because it's really hard but a lot of people said you know look at the frozen category when something is in a freezer it's tough to move around like you can't get an extra inch no, because what it is, it's what out, it is. That's it, yeah. man. Versus like the shelf, you know, they can move things around and slide yeah. things around. You can add shelves. You know, yeah, there's exactly. always a way yeah. to do it. But once you're in a freezer, man, that is literally finite space, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which is why I love a planogram. But but I sort of looked at it the other way and said, well, well, if I can get in the planogram, that also means if I can stay I'm there, here. yeah, I, I'll be there, yeah, right? Yeah. I'll be exactly. that banana skew. You know, maybe I'm down in the corner, but I I, I can hold that but eight I got inches, my spot. twelve inches. I got yeah, my yeah. spot. I've got yeah. my spot. Yeah. So so I saw it like a double edged sword. It might be hard, but if I can hold it, it'll be hard for the other guy too. Is sort of how I. Again, you're you're I thinking saw. way past what most people. Yeah, hundred percent. Sort of do right? to. You guys, this is great for my ego. By the way, this is no. I, I love you, this. no. Take credit for it because <laughs> if one honestly, it is very diff. It's a difficult part of of the retail store period it really is it's not easy to get into and most people don't think it the way you're thinking it you know that they didn't get they don't get that that is a bitch to get in because you can't move the walls of the freezer the doors are the doors it's 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 a tight space and there's money in it for the retailer oh yeah (laughs) they can get good money out of yeah yeah they can frozen guys so now you're playing a listing game it's a whole different world in there whole different world and then you also got time can't be yeah. in a freezer for a year i know like your product's got to move eh? everything's it's gotta got go. it's got to move you know the the nice thing about um you know i've always liked frozen inventory from that point of view right when someone said you know it's really hard frozen whatever you got to keep it frozen i sort of say well yeah but once it's frozen my shelf life is going to beat a lot of other products and a lot for of sure. other cat unless it's something shelf stable right you know you keep me frozen and i'm good for 547 days or right whatever right so you know there's i if you look on the bright side of almost every negative there's there's a as way long to, as you're willing to, to find it. it but we always yeah. tell everybody is don't look at the world with you know the the with rainbows up your butt kind of thing find yeah. that there's negatives everywhere find them figure out what they are mm-hmm. so you know how to go around them or through them or mm-hmm. over them or whatever you need to do but most people don't anticipate them. So when they hit, sure. they get blindsided. And you're thinking, buddy, it was like right there, man. It- Good. Here's the quote of the episode, okay? When you're wearing rose-colored glasses, you can't see the red flags. Okay, thank you. See, that was sort of Amen. the expression I was looking at, but Amen. the trail wasn't going to come out of me. I, I mean, you know, <laughs> the trail, we didn't have expressions like that, right? It's a little small town. And we did the best we could. Like, we kept it simple. Hang on, trail? Did you say trail? Is well, that where you're raised. from? is trail the one that's like halfway between nowhere and nowhere and has that big factory yes. that like spews out that looks like mordor that's trail, that trail baby nice that, i've that driven the through there 
There's at least tattoo. once. Summer is a tattoo. Yeah, trail smoke eaters. Nice. Yes, and it's literally halfway. It's halfway between Calgary half and Vancouver. But in yeah. the middle of I didn't mean nowhere. nowhere and nowhere. I meant it's in the middle of nowhere between two. Trust me, we were in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> two, two big cities on the other side, but in the middle of nowhere. But I yeah. loved it. Loved the Kootenays, love trail, love all of yeah. it. But we definitely didn't have those expressions we had to steal from the city. As yeah. you can tell, I've only been in the city for 40 years almost, so it still hasn't clicked in. Slow no learner. No problem. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah. So how long, because how, you, you're you like, I'm on the website and yes. you are, Kenny, I haven't started shopping yet, but I'm waiting um, for Phil. Phil does you this are, episode, no, no, episode. I already noted. So I, I live in Mississauga. I'm, I'm born and raised in Ontario as well in the Toronto area. Um, okay. But, uh, but I live in Mississauga now and there's a long goes like 10 minutes from here mm -hmm. that has your product in it. So I'm probably not going to order it online, but I'll probably go there tomorrow and pick up some stuff i think we're so. um we're in a bunch of longos it's best for people to always check the website because that seems yeah. to change yeah um real canadian superstore loblaw zayers etc yeah all the metros in ontario too so if you have a metro wow. closer you um, are everywhere so who's we're, we're trying to be who was yeah. the one you went so, to first so yeah. the first uh the first big the first big retailer to say yes was actually Loblaws market division said yes but they were the slowest not the slowest but they launched well after we launched yeah so i got a yes from them in like late 2018 early 2019 um we launched the product into about 100 stores in april of 2019 but we didn't actually launch with Loblaws until canada day like it took them Oh, that, long that long to though. get us set it's, up for them that's not that bad no, that, that was for four five it's... months right for them that's not that bad yeah for them i was thinking it'd be bad. like about a year okay maybe it's not that bad <laughs> no it wasn't it wasn't yeah. that bad and and then in fact it ended up being because the distributor i was using was already set up with them for dsd and they needed to like switch over to warehouse or some. it was some like internal yeah yeah right right, 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 right. right it yeah. wasn't even anything major but we ended up getting a yes from freshco in like I don't know, March, middle of March. And they were like, I'm doing it right now and you'll get a PO. So we ended up launching with Freshco in April. Oh, that's of, nice and fast. Of, yeah, wow, like that's super, really fast. super that's fast. fast. Wow. Um, that's, that's maybe it wasn't March, March, maybe it was retail. February. Yeah. But it was wow. like, it was like we got the yes and then we were doing our scale production run, essentially like our first production run. I sold these guys using samples. And then we did our first scale production run. Thank God it all worked. And then, you know, before we knew it, there were pallets, you know, on their way to various places. Um, wow. So we launched into about 100 stores in April. By May of 2019, we were in, you know, maybe another 50. And then we just sort of kept adding stores. And then Loblaws came on board in July with Market Division. Discount Division was like uh, later in the fall. Right. Um, but in the, in the fall when we, we launched with um, Real Canadian Superstore and those guys. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. In this, in that same summer, we added a lot of more like high profile. I would call Toronto, you know, the the Summer Hills, the, the Pusateries, 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 those guys, yeah, Fiesta yeah. Farms, yeah, yeah, you know, the yeah. the really really nice like gourmet grocery right, type right. stores, um, which is you know, it's like they're not they're not buying a ton of volume, but it's the nice logo to throw on the website kind Absolutely. of thing. They're, they're really great, the right folks. customer. Those those buyers were but, great. But, the yeah. customer is right. Like it's yeah. exactly the right customer. Yeah. yeah. So it was so, it was really great to Ontario to do that. only right now, or like you're across country. I'm assuming we're across not. the country, but only with Loblaws. Just so my superstore down mm -hmm. the street could have it. Yes, mm -hmm. should have it. In, in fact, it probably does. You have to look in the natural foods freezer. That's fine. Okay, as long as I know where I'm going, I'm, I will yeah. take a look. Okay. Yeah, a lot I, of the I hate when they do that. I wish they would put everything together. It still drives me crazy that yeah. this meant I, 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 the grocers are so slow to do things. I don't know why they segregate the store so so much like that. It drives me crazy. It drives me well, I think they crazy. were they were early, right, to that movement. They created that section for those people, yeah. and then now everyone else sort of waited. Combined, they're late them, yeah. to yeah. to yeah, go. Oh back, my so. god, we're just people yeah. in your stores. Let's go <laughs> put it together so you can. So you, how many people you pick up? Because I bet you most people don't even know there's another set. It's my hardest, next to the ice cream. It's my hardest you challenge. Probably go nuts. Yeah. Okay. I'm Aware, go awareness and trial, away. getting people into the right category, the right part of the store. It's is hard. Really difficult. It's very, yeah, very difficult. It's difficult. Yeah. So are you using? So you you found your own distributor, obviously before 
right after you found your co-pack you found a co-packer that does it so this is made in ontario yeah it's made in ontario we we found a great um i talked to a few dairies uh because it's yep. all those are the guys with the ice cream machine they know right? how to do it i guess and it's, they know how to do it sure. so i found a great dairy uh to co-pack for me so everything is uh, and it ended up being peanut free so that was like one more bonus one bonus. more badge i could bonus. Stamp yeah on that absolutely package yeah. and then um i ended up uh, working with a great distributor, uh, again, here in Ontario, um, who does a lot of ice cream for basically everybody except Nestle. Fantastic. Um, like they work with Unilever and right. a bunch of independents and, and a lot of brands that, that I feel good about, you know, sort of being in the portfolio with. So that mm-hmm. was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, they're really going in that direction, which is good. Yeah, that's awesome. And, um, you know, so, so that was, that was the start. And since then I've added, um, a distributor in Quebec, right? Because uh, this distributor subs to everybody else. They're right. mostly Ontario, but they subbed everybody else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I ended up finding another distributor that I liked uh, that was more like natural foods based, and they really knew the the market uh, in Quebec. And I'm working with a great broker who also speaks French. I don't speak French, so it was yeah. I really needed in help else. in that area yeah, you, to build that market. Yeah, you won't mm-hmm. get in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, you won't. I mean, it's a different market. That's, that's yeah. That it is, was it yeah. was difficult. It was difficult. Yeah, you're not yeah. going to go in. Um, but then you know the rest of the country is still kind of that's our that's our white space, right? We got a other than we're we're in Calgary. We're in yeah. You know, we we landed uh, Fed Co-op pretty early on too. Like wow. I would say the late 2019. Okay. And this all happened right before the pandemic, right? Yeah. Pandemic hits, everything like screeches to a halt as far as like growth and everything yeah um but right before the pandemic hit we we managed to get a listing with fed co-ops we're sort of in the middle of canada right. as well um i just realized i talk a lot with my hands <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm italian i talk to my hands it's all, all good time, man so yeah. like, you're, you're in great company you're in yeah, great company good. don't worry about it you <laughs> can't do um... anything on this show that's going to do anything <laughs> we won't notice half of it because we probably do worse than you yeah yeah. Right. Nice. yeah 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 so so i mean we continue wow. to grow but but our challenge is i think what what i hear from other uh small food brands which is you know my distribution is there my manufacturing is figured out now i just need consumers to try it and buy it try it and buy it right so so i've been trying to do basically anything i can to get people's attention um to get them to try the product you know and i i've done lots of different um kind of pr stuff i found a guy with a banana car I've done traditional couponing type, you know, right. trade spend stuff. I got to do it all. I got to, it's sort of like all the basics are, or all the fundamentals are fundamentals for a reason. Right. So you got to yeah. kind of do everything. Yeah. So and then, I, and then I add my, I add my digital layer to this, which is like, you know, still got to do the Instagram right. stuff. Yeah. Um, well, they're table yeah, stakes really. Right. You got to do. Yeah. That. It's all, it's all the yeah. basics. It's all table stakes. Yeah. For sure. But Andrew, are you using yeah. like for your sales and all that stuff? Um, are you using brokers to help you cross the country as well? Or is it just you, your sales, but the distributors do their thing, obviously, but you're, are you calling on the key accounts and trying to set up? I mean, demos are going to come back. We know that shows yeah. like there was just a plant show if I'm not mistaken in Vancouver. Yeah. I think last planted, week. they renamed the veg expo. To Thank you. I thought that's planted. what they had done. Yeah. You know, I have, um, we don't go to shows anymore, so I don't, I don't even, I, I would have gone, but you don't think shows since the stupid pandemic. Yeah. All, and you know what? Tra- I'm soured on trade shows. I think trade shows, I basically, I have a list. I know, I know all the buyers already right. who can make a dent in Canada. There aren't that many. And especially in this category. No, you need a consumer show. You I need, need the shows. consumer shows. I need that's those like 50,000 people. You, you need, you need the, people to taste yeah. it, right? That's, that's good, yeah, yeah. The old school sampling that because yeah. like, trade shows, to your point, and, and it's funny you learned it that quickly. Most will go 10 years and start thinking, why am I doing this? You're thinking, well, because now you're sort of stuck in that if you don't go, people think, oh, is he still alive? Is the business yeah. okay? Now you've got a reputation. Now you got other, you're not going for any yeah. other reasons just outside of people need to know I'm not bankrupt. I'm still in existence, <laughs> right? It's so stupid, right? But a consumer yeah. show, you know, you don't even need a 50,000 person. If 5,000 people at a great oh, yeah. show that and- are stoked, yeah, you're going to get 5,000 people, even 5,000 yeah. customers. The funny thing about, you know, when you're an entrepreneur and it's your own time that you're putting in, I already have the tent. I have the product. I'll do a sampling event for like a couple hundred people. You know, if it, if it, if I have the time, why, why wouldn't not? I just pop my tent yeah, yeah. and get a hundred people? Yeah. Who's so, going to sell better than you? 
Right. Yeah, exactly. Especially, right? So, so scale sometimes doing things that don't scale sometimes is like really cool. And I don't mind doing it as long as I have, yeah, you as know, long the as you have the time. The, yeah. As long as you have the time, but especially as long as I can make it work. your consumers, you know, you get people, Hey, have you thought of this? Have you thought of that? Have you tried maybe flavors will come out of it? I'm assuming you're going to want, you have to have a dog or a cat because you ran, you ran out of kids unless you and the <laughs> wife are going to be in the next flavors or your oh, mom and dad oh, no, or someone's next, going to be on the, the list. You're exactly right. We named it. I have four other flavors in development that are basically figured out and they're named after my nephew, my sister, my yeah, I mom. I had to start grabbing people. <laughs> someone's going to be on the <laughs> Someone's going to be on these things. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. That's fantastic. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's really cool. It. I, I, it's a very different, yeah. I mean, you, know, you, you may not see it, but it is a very different way. Um, it's not the normal way that a lot of the no. small businesses start. No. It really isn't. No. Um, it's pretty yeah. cool. Like I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I mean, considering and, and, again, you come and, from the CPG world, per se, that's wow. But you've you. and you scaled really quickly, yeah, right? Like shit. you think I mean, of really? the, you know, because traditionally we hear a lot, you know, where they get to, you know, kind of low entry, uh, low cost of entry retailers, right? And then they struggle to get in. But you landed, you landed Loblaws and and um, Metro you know, and, and Sobe, like, like Metro, big, some, like it's it's pretty. Those are big accounts. Yeah, these guys mm -hmm. are big and, and they're quite unwieldy, right? Like they, they really are they like are. the especially in the set you're in again. You you picked, yeah. you know, you probably picked yeah. the hardest you picked one of the hardest places in the store to go to. Like, you know, anything in the refrigerator, anything's plugged in that's the shelf is a bitch to you get know, in. I, when I when I hear that though, it's like it's not like we picked the category. We we picked the product and you it was the in product. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, is why I most kick people myself every it. day. I wish I could sell a granola bar or something i can keep boxes of in my basement if i need to it like be a shitload easier <laughs> <laughs> i but you're in a good spot but, you're, but you're hey i i actually don't i don't know if that's true anymore because they're Not probably anymore. about i don't know a like trillion? somewhere in the pandemic we went from oh sure if, maybe, if it's easy there's a million of them oh. right there's like there was 200 granola yeah, bars ridiculous. maybe before the pandemic there's probably about a thousand <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's insane. You know, like and, it's kind of like cookie dough. Have you guys right? seen like, all these cookie yeah. doughs? Like, yeah, it seems yeah. how long like is that going to last? As soon as edible the cookie dough finally over, whenever we get out of this mess, a lot well, of that I stuff's going to dissipate. It's going to yeah, go. Yeah, you know, yeah. I I keep seeing it though, and I'm like, who's I know. who's buying cookie dough? Because I'm fat I enough. I, I don't know. <laughs> oh my god, gotta stop. Yeah, yeah, gotta stop. But yeah. this is this is yeah. really fat. I, I'm so glad you came out because this is. I love the story. I think it's really, really cool. I'm good on yeah. you. Man. That's that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And it's good that you're yeah. doing, you seem to be doing well with it. It's it's you're still going. It's still growing. So when are the new still SKUs going to come? Like are you are you thinking innovation or so, uh, so extension? Our next, yeah, I mean our our um, well, so we did a couple of things. So one, uh, when we launched, we launched in 500 ml traditional like pints, right? 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 Hog and Small, kind of thing. Yeah, that's and awesome. Ben and Jerry's whatever. Yeah. Well, it turns out my co-packer also had this machine that would make these little cups. Uh, oh, uh, like the little, uh, like the old school, like with Dixie, a little, they were called Dixie exactly. it's not really a spoon. It's like a, it's a, a wooden little, stick. The wood, the wood yeah, the the spoon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The little fat and little end on it. And yeah. Yeah. The cup is like a clear cup with a pedal bottom. It's a hundred mls. Okay. Oh, nice size. And it's, a, so it's a perfect size for a novelty. Yeah. So I got them to put, you know, the same product, you know, I had to make the lids and get the right barcode and all that. But, but then I ended up having all these samples that I can give out or sell at a that's fair awesome. or do, that's do all this cool. stuff with um, that. I didn't have to use like 500 ml and crack that and just give out right. spoonfuls. I could give out little cups, especially during the pandemic, which, tough to do, which was very handy when the pandemic hit, it meant I had to give out a lot more volume of product instead of a spoonful. I was given a whole one. But it also made people really happy, right? If you're at absolutely, a, if you're at some event, like we did a thing with Metro all summer where they were doing these drive-ins in their parking lots. Yeah. And so I pitch a tent and I just give out ice cream. And there was there were other booths there trying to sell stuff whenever. And I'm I'm just looking for awareness. So I'm like, here, try this. You can buy it in that store because it was in the Metro parking right. lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it makes people happy, right? If you're a little kid and somebody hands you ice cream and, and then on. they Who's say, say no? yeah, come hey, on. if you want to try the other flavor, come yeah. back in 10 listen, minutes listen. and I'll give we're, you another one. <laughs> like at school gatherings, yeah, we're happy to pay for the same 
piece of crap ice cream with the little uh, chocolate swirl in it or the strawberry yeah, yeah. swirl in it with the the flat yes. paddle thing that we call a spoon yes. like you we pay we you buy tickets so that you can get that ice cream right and that ice cream is the same size like that and it's not any it's not really good for you it's just crap ice cream in a little <laughs> yes. little cool container because... right so so now you can like for you this is something where look like one it's super healthy so for schools this should be a major attraction it has What's no the peanut. Free, dairy free i mean seriously it, which is a major major issue for all schools now right so absolutely wow i mean you've got if you got know, now that you know a school up. that wants to buy a box <laughs> well schools sort of need to be back into normal before that happens yeah. Yeah, that's another that's mess number 27. To I was so yeah, but, happy when pizza day started up again, because that yeah, makes my yeah, life yeah. easier when I'm making lunches yeah, yeah. for these kids. Yeah, one X, cool. one less meal. I and hear you. Yeah. a couple pennies here. I go buy you. a pizza. Yeah. No, seriously, right? Anyway, like, as long as you pizza. got pizza, you just got to remember to buy the pizza tickets. Right. And then you're good to go. Yeah. yeah. So, that's yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our school, we pay ahead and then it's just every Tuesday there's pizza. Yeah, they didn't and change that until awesome. we left. Like my kids are are 14, 15, and the other one's 20 and, and out of the house now. But um, you know, like they didn't change that until after we left as soon as the last kid left, right? And then it was like, hey, we're automated. I'm like, son of a <laughs> I used to buy those stupid tickets that I have to buy them and then give them back to you, right? Like yeah, that's a long time so ago. Dumb. Like, yeah, this is amazing. This is um I'll ask my local school for sure because I think I think uh, you know hopefully Once they get I mean back in the swing it, of things, yeah it's really cool because because I I think the back half out. of this year this right really like good. you know everything's going hopefully everything's going back to yeah. normal normal <laughs> whatever that means but yeah even kids if, getting the vaccine is going to change yeah, yeah. yeah change yeah. the whole game so you think yeah. like school barbecues at the end of the year yeah it's gonna be really and timely, we we, right? we did that we just moved up to yeah. um, near Aurelia. Uh, but we, when we were living in Toronto for the last yeah. 15 years, yeah. um, you know, we would do that for the kids' school. We, oh my gosh, would kids bring these must be super of, popular, like the ice cream dude. Yeah, you, you just well, needed I mean, a, there was one of a those neighboring school then, who we were yeah. friend, we were friends with, like the parent council, yeah, a couple of people on the parents count council, and they were like, you know, we're doing a fun day, and we want to buy a bunch of your ice cream to to give out. And I was like, great. How about I pop a tent too? And really get the yeah, brand yeah, out yeah, there yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah, that was a blast that's yeah. fantastic uh, good for you wow yeah. good, for, good you. for you that's wow. really cool man um that cool that's very cool this is so cool um thank you for coming on the show yeah thanks for having me guys. yeah yeah um if people want to find you how, how do they find you uh the best way is yellowfruit.com so you know, as Kenny mentioned, yellow without the W, yeah. uh, you know, you want to trademark a word, you got to invent it. So yeah. we created yellow fruit, yellowfruit.com has uh, where you can find retailers. It has info about the products. Uh, and basically every email address you find on that website will go to me if somebody uh, in the business world wants to email me. Um, uh, but well, don't tell know. any consumers that. Digital leash, right? Like, <laughs> Uh, it doesn't matter who you email. It's coming here. I got it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, they're all aliases. So that's probably the best way to find me. Um, and LinkedIn, like we LinkedIn. talked about before, like yeah. I'm that guy who, if you're a real person and not some scammer spammer, you know, let's hook up. I'm I'm yeah. happy to connect with people that's who awesome. are just trying to sell me something. So no, we connected awesome. tonight, you and I. So I was that was good. I love it. I love it. I love that's it. That's probably we'll how I learned how to spell yellow. By the way, just real people that. doing real things. That's, 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 that's the that idea. Crazy. We'll, we'll put all of your links in our, our podcast episode as well. But uh, yeah. amazing. Thanks, thanks for coming on. I'm this really is, glad you came on. It's fantastic. That's fantastic. I'm really going to go cool, buy man. some tomorrow. Seriously. I'm going to go check our, our yeah. superstore down the street. Yeah. I'm going to go see what Excellent. it is. Excellent. Yeah. That sounds great, guys. Give it a try. I'll put well, you on my man. mailing list and send you coupons every week. We love it. That's that's okay. I too. think I've already signed up, actually. Did they pop sure up? Because I think the, sure the website thing popped up. So, no, I didn't order because I'm going to go. I have two longos near me. And the one, the one has it and the one doesn't have it. So I'm going to go buy some and then go hassle the guy. The guy at my local long goes, he's tired of seeing me, right? I'm always like, nice. dude, there's, You're always asking there's him stuff. stuff, right? There's stuff. You don't have this. It's thing. listed, like, man. You don't have to do God, anything. It's in the warehouse. Like, I know. That's why Just order it. Yeah. Just order it, yeah. man. You don't have to do yeah. anything. That's so frustrating for, for, re for me when I am working with a retailer and I'm not in the planogram, but I'm in yeah. the warehouse and I have to like go to every individual store or yeah. sell them or whatever. 
it's like, oh, that's that's so frustrating. It's you got to do it. So one of our other episodes, one of our other episodes, um, there's there's a guy named Bram who runs a a, an app called Yes. Shelfgram. Does Shelfgram. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I know so Bram. Shelfgram said, oh, okay, great. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's an amazing guy. Shelfgram's an awesome product. Yeah. They've great got idea, a lot man. of backup from Field Agent. Yeah. You know, that's we've had, yeah. we've had them this on. Like yeah. a commercial. Tonight's yeah. podcast brought to you by Shelfgram. Yeah. Hey, we should I do know. that. We gotta go we talk to them about that. that. And Field Agent, because we've had those guys yeah. on too. Jeff. Yeah. Bram. Jeff's been on. Jeff from Field Agent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are those guys are good dudes. Just so you guys know, there's a debit coming. Yeah, you got used to that word yeah. now too, haven't you? You heard debit, 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 debit. <laughs> Come on, it was so oh. nice. Don't don't bug well, the guy with debits in the middle of the night like that's terrible. Well, you guys are late time. I keep forgetting you guys are eleven. Yeah, o'clock. you you can't remind Very him about Loblaw's debits at like eleven so o'clock late at night. For this oh, it's terrible. Oh my God. <laughs> well, it's not. It's eight o'clock here, so you know what the hell. Uh, Andrew, thank you yeah. very much. Andrew, I really Thanks. appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Okay. Take Good job, buddy. Good luck, and uh, we'll talk to you. Yeah. About, well, we will talk to you next year. Um, so things listen, are going. If if you when you launch new flavors, let us know. Hit yes. us up, and we'll bring you back on the show. Yeah, and you that talk about awesome. them. We'll we'll give yeah. you we'll give you whatever we can in terms of. And then by uh, then your distribution voice, so. may have changed yeah. and things like that. Here's mm-hmm. some other yeah. cool aspects of the story. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great, guys. I appreciate awesome. it. And no, let me okay. know, you know, if I could ever help you guys with anything, you thank let you. me know. Oh, cool. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate that. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Take care, Andrew. Phil, you're staying on for a minute? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, I'll just leave then. You yeah, can yeah, head yeah. out. They're done. Thanks. Alrighty. Thanks, buddy. Go to Bye, sleep. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I, not, I many like businesses, not many businesses, not many businesses, small businesses so thought out prior to hitting the, the, the shelf. Right. I mean, seriously, I mean, that, that was not he's no nonsense, story. man. Pitter patter. Let's get at her. Like, exactly. he's, he's, and you know, he's all over it. And, he, you know, like, yeah, it's I mean, it's honestly, how many do we hear? It's, ah, I started in the kitchen then I went to the basement kitchen and then we went yeah, to the neighbor's yeah, house yeah, yeah, and then we went to, you know, yeah. and you're thinking this guy now. Nah, it's like, Look, we're going to do this. Bader, bing, 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 bing. Let's I, go. I think it's the first time we've ever heard unit economics on this. Show. Seriously, that's awesome. No, like. Uh, definitively, uh, emphatically, go back. Unequivocally. <laughs> Inside joke, guys. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> Kenny. I'm not a oh, terrorist. Oh, Kenny. Oh, okay. Anyway. Oh, man. That's well, it. we thank you for listening to this episode. <laughs> yes, we do. Uh... Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, man. That was fun. No, that was good, buddy. All right, that was good. <laughs>